Welcome to part 6 of this tutorial series where we're creating this sci-fi security drone in Blender. So in the previous part we had done the rigging and in this part we're going to be creating a city background and we're going to pose the drone and render out a final image. So I'm going to hold down the Z button and go into rendered view just so that I can see this in the rendered mode. Now I want to unhide the lights that we hid so right here on the lights and camera collection I'm going to click on this and check mark it. So now we have those lights and that looks a lot better. So I want to now add a camera, so I'm going to press Shift A, and let's go right down here to camera, we're just going to add a camera, and then I can just move my view to where I want the camera to be, and I want the view to be about here. I can now press Control Alt Numpad 0, and Control Alt Numpad 0 is going to place the camera to our view. And then if I want to move the camera around further, I can press G to grab, with the camera selected that's going to move it around. I can also press G to grab, and then I can double tap the Z key and that is going to bring it in and out and I'm just going to bring it back here and then also I could double tap the R key that's going to turn on the trackball rotation and I could rotate that around I just want to bring the camera back so that we are kind of looking up at the drone almost like the drone is flying up in the air and we're looking up at it so I'm now going to add a cube and we're going to use that to create a very basic city building so I'm going to press shift a and let's go here to mesh and I'm going to add a cube I can hold down the Z button and go back into solid view and I'm going to navigate over here and I'm going to bring it over and then scale it up and kind of bring it back here in the background. And then I'll press 7 on the numpad for top view and I'm going to bring it a bit closer and scale it up a bit more. And then I'll press the tab key to go into edit mode and I'm going to go right here to the face select and I can just select this face and I can press G and Z and just push that down so it is longer. And press 0 on the numpad to go into the camera view. I can tab to go back to object mode and I think I will scale this down and then bring it up a little bit. And I'm actually going to bring it up more so I'll bring it up about that high, maybe scale it down. Now I do want to duplicate this building and make another one over here but before I do that I want to add the material. So I'm going to click right over here on the shading tab, let's go into the camera view, and I can click on the new button to add a new material here in the shader editor. And I can just rename this material to building. And then as I mentioned in part one of the tutorial series, I'm going to be using a free building texture from Ambient CG, so the link is in the description if you'd like to download it. Now to add in all the textures automatically, I'm going to be using the Node Wrangler add-on. So if you don't have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled, you can click here on Edit and go to the Preferences, and then over there in the Add-ons tab, just search for Node Wrangler and checkmark the Node Wrangler add-on. So now that the Node Wrangler add-on is enabled, I can select the principal shader, and then I can press Control shift t And that is going to take you to Blender's file browser, and then you can just locate to where you've downloaded the textures. So once you download the texture, you can extract the zip file and go into the extracted folder, and you're going to have some different files here. Now I don't want to use all of these, I just want to use the color, so select the color. Also hold down the Shift key and select the emission. And then also I want to select the normal GL, and then also the roughness, so Shift select the roughness. Just those four, and then I can click on Principle Texture Setup. And the Node Wrangler add-on is automatically going to set up all the textures. You can see it's using the texture coordinate with the UVs, and it's plugged up all the textures correctly. Now I do want to change the UV unwrapping, so let's click right over here on the UV Editing tab to change the UV unwrapping. And then press the A key in Edit Mode to make sure you select all the cube. And then I'm going to press the U button, and that's going to bring up the Unwrap Settings, and I just want to do the Smart UV project and then I can click on OK. And then if I hold down the Z button, go into the material preview, we can see what this is looking like. And that looks fine for what we're doing. We don't need something very complex, we just need something pretty simple in the background, that's going to be fine. Now I do want to scale this up, so in the UV editor I can press the A key, and that's going to select all of the UV mapping, and I can press S to scale, and then I'm going to type 2 and enter, just to scale it up by double the amount. Alright, and then I can go right back over here to the shading tab and see what that is looking like. So that is pretty good, although I I think I might kind of zoom out here and I'm just going to bring the building a bit farther back. So something like that is better, and maybe bring it up a bit. Now this building is actually quite visible, and I want to make it much less visible. So I'm going to first start by making it darker. So I'm going to press Shift A, let's go here to the search, and I'm going to search for the hue saturation value, and I'm going to put that after the base color. 
And then I want to take the value here and I'm going to turn that to 0.1 so that it is much darker. And then I'm also going to go right down here to the emission and I'm going to turn the emission strength to 0.1 and that way those windows there which are an emission are going to be much darker. So now the building is less visible. Now to make the building even less visible I'm going to turn the specular value down. So I'm going to turn the specular down to a 0.05. So now the building is much less visible and it's just kind of a background element. And also there's this grid here and I don't really want to see the grid. So if you click right here to go to the overlays I'm going to turn off the floor and turn off all the axes here just so that we can't see the grid there in the view. So now that I've finished the building, I'm going to select it and I'm going to press Shift D to duplicate. And let's bring this over on the X axis and also maybe bring it back a bit on the Y axis. So bring it back there. And I might bring this back over a bit on the X axis. So stick that about there, something like that. Now I also want to add a plane in the background and I want to make it fully black just so that it looks like the night sky. I don't want the background to be very visible. So I'm just making a very dark, simple background and just suggesting that there is a city in the background. So I'm going to press Shift day let's go here to mesh and I'm going to add a plane and then I can zoom out here and I'm going to press G to grab and S to scale we're going to scale this up really big and I can rotate that over you can also double tap the R key to activate the trackball rotation and then go into the camera view and just make sure it's covering up everything that the camera can see so now to make this a fully black material I can click on new here I can just rename this to sky and then I can take the base color and I can turn it to fully black and then I can take the specular and I can turn it all the way down to zero. So now it's just a fully black plane. And that's going to be great for the background because I don't want a very visible background. So now we can click back over here on the layout and I'm going to go into the camera view. Now I also wanted to add a depth of field so that the background is a bit blurred, but then the drone is in focus. So I'm going to press shift A and I'm going to go right down here and add an empty and I'm going to add a plane axis. And then I can press S to scale. We can just scale this way down and I'm going to press G to grab and move it over here. And I'm adding an empty object because an empty object isn't actually visible to the camera so I can move it to a very precise spot and then I can set the depth of field to be focusing on the empty and I actually made it way too small so let's scale that up a bit and then I'm gonna bring this over here press the period on the numpad to zoom into it and bring it very close to the drone and I'm gonna bring it over here and kind of stick it right here on the side of the drone kind of on the front right about there and then I can press the zero on the numpad to go into the camera view so I can now click right up here to select the camera and I'm going to go right over here to the object data properties. And then you can check mark the depth of field. And then if you click right here on the drop down, you can choose the focus object. So I'm going to click on the eyedropper and I'm going to select that empty there. So I can now hold down the Z button, move my mouse up into the rendered view, and I can first start by turning the F stop way down to a small value. And you can see the blur is too much. So if I now start to drag the F stop up, I can also hold down the shift key as I drag the F stop and that's going to change it. So I want the background to be a bit blurred. So you're mostly just focusing on the drone. So I'm going to go with an F stop value of 1.2. I think 1.2 looks pretty good. And then again, if you want to hide the grid, there which is in the scene you can click right here on the overlays and you can uncheck the floor and also the axes here now I think some of these rim lights are actually a little bit too bright so if you click on the rim light here you can change the power so I might just change this down to like a 200 something like that also this one down here I might just change this to like a 100 so it's not quite as bright maybe scale it down a bit and move it over because some of these rim lights do look a bit too bright maybe turn this one down to just like 150. And then I could select this rim light back here. I'm gonna press G to grab and then double tap the R key to trackball rotate that and then maybe scale it down a little bit so it's not quite as bright. So something like that. And let's press Control S to save the Blender file. So I'm now just gonna make a very basic pose for the drone. So I'm gonna select the controller object here Double tap the R key to do the trackball rotation, maybe rotate it over to the side a little bit. And I could also scale it down so it looks like it's flying. And also make sure that the empty there, the empty which is controlling the depth of field is close up to the body. 
And then I could move some of these around. So I think I'm going to select this piece here. And I could also do this in the solid view. It might be easier to do it in the solid view. I could rotate this up and maybe rotate this over a little bit. That's pretty cool. And then I could also select this blaster here and shift select this blaster. And I could double tap the R key, maybe rotate that over. Maybe also bring this down a little bit. And then I could also rotate this forward. So rotate that forward or maybe even a little bit back. That might look cool. And then this one here could be rotated forward a bit. And I could also like rotate this down and maybe rotate this up a little bit. Something like that, just a very simple pose to make him look like he's flying. So that is pretty cool. Now I also want these rotor blades to have some motion blur to look like they're actually spinning. So I'm going to do a very small animation to make them spin, and then that way there will actually be some motion blur when we render this. So what I'm going to do is click right up here when the crosshair appears, and I can click and drag down, and this is going to split the window. And then on this bottom window here, I can click on this to change the editor type, and I'm going to change change this to the timeline. And then I'm going to zoom in here and I'm going to zoom in to the first frame. So I can just do a very small animation. So I'm going to first go to frame one and then just make sure you have these two rotor blade objects selected. I can now press the I key and that's going to add the insert keyframe menu and I want to click on rotation just to add rotation keyframes. Then I'm going to move over to frame five and I can hit R to rotate, and you could just like rotate this around manually, but I'm going to instead type in 100,000. So right up there in the top left, you can actually see what I'm typing. So I'm going to type in 100,000 and then hit enter. Just a really big number, so it rotates it around a lot. And now that that's rotated around, I'm going to press the I key again, and I can insert a rotation. So now if I go between these frames, you can see it's going to rotate around. It's actually going to rotate a lot, um, but that is fine. We just want to go now to frame three, which is in the very center. So because these objects are moving at frame three, there's going to be some motion blur. And also go right here to the render properties and make sure the motion blur is turned on. Now there is a setting that I want to change in the motion blur settings. So if I click on the arrow here, I can open this up. So real quick, I'm just going to give this a render. So I'm going to press Control S to save, and then I'm just going to press F12 to render the image. All right, so the image has rendered, and if you zoom over here to the blades, you can definitely see that there is some motion blur because we checkmarked the motion blur, but it actually doesn't look very high quality. It doesn't look like it's moving around very fast, and it's not very blurred. And this is because of the motion blur steps. So right here on the motion blur steps, I'm going to change this to like 10, and that will make the render times a bit longer, but it will look much nicer. So I can press F12 again, and that's going to re-render it, and we'll see what it looks like. And there we go, so it does look better. And then you can also change the shutter here. So just to show you, I'm going to turn the shutter way down, and then I'm going to press F12 to render this again. And you can see because I turn the shutter down, the blur isn't quite as much. And if I turn the shutter all the way up to 1, I can now render this again. And you can see now that's really looking like the blades are spinning much faster because I turned the shutter up. So I'm going to save this image. So to save this image, you can click right up here on Image and then click on save as. And I'm just going to save this as final render in a folder with my other files. And also for the file format, I'm just going to change this to JPEG and turn the quality up to 100. You could also use PNG. Either one will work fine. And then I'm going to click on save as image. And this is going to wrap up this part of the tutorial series. So again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you've been enjoying the tutorial series. Now, the tutorial series isn't finished yet. There's still one more part. So in the next part, we're going to be animating the animation. We're going to have the drone fly in, kind of look around, and then the lights are going to change from blue to red as though he's detected something because he's a security drone, and then he's going to shoot those blasters and then fly away. We're going to be rendering out all the frames, and then we're going to compile them together in Blender's video editor, and then we'll also add some sound effects to make the final animation very cool. So to watch the final part, part 7, I will have it right up there on the end screen and the link in the description. So thank you for watching, and I will see you in the last part.